What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for beginners. Today's episode number five will be about loops. Now in the last video we talked about conditions and if statements and today we're going to take a step further and start automating processes with loops. Now in Python we have two types of loops, while loops and for loops, and these work quite differently. So let us just start out with the first type of loop which is the while loop. So let's open up our script. And what a while loop basically does is it executes a certain piece of code over and over again as long as a certain condition is met. Or in other words, we set a condition and as long as this condition returns true, we run the same code with every iteration over and over again. When the condition returns false, we terminate the loop. So for example, we can define a variable x equals zero and we can say while x is less than 10, so while is the keyword here, and we can say while this condition returns true, we execute a statement. Now, of course, this condition right now is true, so if I just let it that way and say, for example, print, uh, print x or something, we would get into an endless loop because, you know, x will always be less than 10 here and it will always execute the statement, so it will go on forever. So what we could do is we could increase x by one with every iteration. So what happens then is we say, okay, x is less than 10 because it's zero. Then we increase it by one and x is one. So we print one. Then we get again into the loop. So we check, okay, one is less than 10. So we again make or do an iteration. So we do this over and over again until x reaches 10 because then 10 is no longer less than 10 and we terminate the loop. So in this case, what would happen is we would count from one to 10. Now another popular way to make an endless loop is to just say while true because sometimes in programming we need endless loops um, that go on as long as we or until we terminate them manually so we say while true and something I don't know print something usually we don't print in endless loops but uh, this would happen so if you want an endless loop for some reason you can use while true. Now for loops are the second type of loops and they work quite differently. A for loop actually iterates over a sequence, but since sequences are the topic of the next video and we haven't talked about them yet, we're going to look at for loops in a practical way for now. So we, we can use for loops for counting or telling Python how many times to do or to execute uh, a certain piece of code. So basically how I do this is I say for and then I say 4x in range, I don't know, some number 10 or 20, whatever, let's say 20. And then I can put my code here. So I can say print x. And what this does is it prints from 0 to 19 because actually uh, we start counting from 0 20 times. So we get 20 numbers, but we start counting from 0. So we get from 0 to 19, obviously. If we want to change that, we can also go with. Uh, 1 and 21 because the last number doesn't count so basically I say 1 and 21 would give me 1 to 20 actually. So what I'm doing here is I have my control variable, this is a control variable x here, that iterates over this sequence. So as I said we're not going to talk about sequences but you can imagine this range function to give me some collection of numbers, in this case the numbers from 1 to 20. And what I do with x is I say with every iteration x becomes the next number. So in the first iteration x is 1, in the second iter iteration is, it's 2 and so on. But if I would have different numbers, for example 21 to uh, 41, in the first iteration x would be 21, in the second 22 and so on. So I can use this to just count basically or I can use this to tell the interpreter how many times to do something. So for x in range 20, let's say print hello world 20 times. This would also work. Now we're going to talk about the application of for loops in the next video in more detail because when we deal with sequences, for loops are quite important there. But as I said for now, we're not going to talk about for loops and sequences. So just know for this episode that you can count and you can automate processes with for loops. Now one thing that is quite useful when it comes to loops are the so-called loop control statements. These allow us to manually control our loops. Now 
imagine we have a loop again from x is 0 while x is less than 10. And at some point, I want to break this loop just manually. So I say, um, I don't know, again, x plus equals 1 and print x. But if x reaches the value 5, I just want to terminate the loop. So it doesn't matter if the condition is met or not. If x reaches the value 5, what I do is I break the loop. So this is the first loop control statement that we're going to talk about, the break statement. A break statement just terminates the loop. There's nothing more to it. It just says, okay, it's over now. We continue with the rest of the code because the while loop is now broken. And in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but in some cases when we have some loops, some very big loops, some, uh, some loops with a lot of if statements in there, uh, we might have a certain point in the loop where we don't care about the condition because if something happens, we would just want to break the loop. It doesn't matter. Especially when we have while true loops, so endless loops, we use break statements quite often because it's basically the only way to exit in uh, an endless loop. So if you want to terminate, just use the break statement. Another statement that would be quite useful is the continue statement, because the continue statement does not break the whole loop, it just skips the current iteration. So let's say I want to increase the numbers all the time, but when x reaches the value 5, I still increase it, but I don't want to print the value 5 for some reason. So I can say if x equals... no actually wrong. If x equals 5, I say continue. This is the next statement, the loop control statement. So if x is 5, we still get to this part of the loop because it says, okay, x plus equals 1. But then x reaches 5 and we just skip this iteration. So we don't print x. And the next thing that happens is again, increasing x by 1. So we will print the number 4 and the number 6, but not the number 5. This is basically how it works. And uh, you'll see that the 5 is missing here. And actually, I can also show you the break statement because I think I didn't demonstrate what it does. In this case, it just breaks the loop. And the continue statement is, as I said, only used to skip one iteration. So if something is uh, is the case, we can check. If something happens that uh, that causes us to want to skip this iteration, we can do this. And this is what the continue statement is for, basically. Now, the last statement that we're going to talk about is not really a loop control statement, but it is a very useful statement when it comes to loops, if statements, functions, and so on. It is a so-called pass statement. And this statement allows us to fill places in our script where code is needed, but we don't really know what we want to put in uh, on this place yet. So, for example, we could say, if x is, I don't know, 25, just something, and we want to do something here, but we want to define what to do later on. So for now, we just want to have this if, uh, if statement here, but we still have some code here afterwards that we want to execute, but our compiler, or in this case, our interpreter, will not allow us to run the module when we have an empty if statement. So to just fill it without any functionality, to, ju to just make it... Uh, runnable if you want, you can use a pass statement because let's say I have a print statement here, one, two, three, whatever, and um, I don't have this pass statement here, I will get an error because when I run, it will say expected an indented block because, you know, there's nothing there. But if I add this pass statement, actually nothing happens. But, um, okay, in this case, x is not defined, of course. So let's say x is 25. Um, now the condition is met, but nothing happens. We just print the statement. So it basically passes this if statement. Um, so we just use this keyword to fill our code uh, to make it runnable if we don't know what to do yet. And we can do this not only with if statements, we can do this with while loops, with for loops, with everything actually. So we can do this wherever we want. So that's everything about loops for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about sequences, lists, and tuples. There's a lot more to learn here, so stay tuned and keep watching these videos. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And also, if you want to see more, subscribe to this channel and feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.